Hello, this is Broyer, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play series for Millennia. You guys had to know that with Civilization VI and other 4X games being such a prominent part of the channel, eventually I would work my way over to Millennia. Uh, I did play the demo a few weeks back, or the open beta, whatever it was that they had a while back. Uh, but I'll be honest with you, I didn't really get into it. I didn't really like it that much from that first playthrough. Uh, so I, therefore, I didn't do any sort of... Um, demo let's play or demo let's try or anything like that i decided to wait for the full game uh and even then i wasn't super excited about it this game came out what three or four days ago as of the time that i'm writing this um i wasn't necessarily super excited about it although i have been watching uh at least a youtuber uh, you guys know that i watch quill 18 a lot he's the guy that inspired me to get into youtubing and i've been watching him play his run through a little bit and honestly he admitted as well his first uh, reaction to millennia was not really the game for me, but as he gave a little bit more time, he started enjoying aspects of it a little bit more. Is it a Civilization VI killer? No, because it's not really that much like Civilization VI other than there's hexes and it goes through history. Like, there's there's so many differences between this game and a game like Civilization VI that we have to kind of treat this game in its own right, in its own respects. And maybe just enjoy this game for what it is. Obviously, there's definitely things that we're going to probably have problems with and not enjoy as much, but... Uh, we're not looking for civ the, the Civ Killer, right? We're just looking for another fun game. And I think it can be another fun game, at least to some degree. So, we're going to get into this. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get into a new game. Uh, I believe the quick start is just default settings and default difficulty and everything like that. So, I think we're just going to hit quick start. I think it randomizes the leader that you get. You randomize all the other civilizations. And I think we're on just like the medium, you know, I think there's like five difficulty levels. I think we're like on the medium one or something like that. Which seems like a good idea to get us started in this first one. So we're just going to jump into Kickstarter. I guess we can actually check the, uh, select the difficulty here. Uh, so we're on Adept out of five. Seems like a good place to start since we know a little bit about civilization. Um, I do... Hmm, I think we are just going to random the nation. And honestly, we might as well just random the start bonus as well. I don't... I mean, I know some of these are going to probably be stronger than others. But I kind of like the idea of just randomizing it completely. Let's just play with it and see what it does for us. So let's just get right into... Our very first game, initializing the timeline. So I have only played 20 minutes of this from the demo. And then, like I said, I have watched a little bit of, of Quill's uh, playthrough himself. So I know a little bit about the game, but I have not actually played the game beyond you know, those first 20 minutes myself. So there's definitely going to be probably things I make mistakes on, things to learn, things like that. Welcome to Millennia. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, uh, we'll just sit okay for now. Uh, knowledge, I mean, that's research. We know about research. Production. I mean, I don't think that's going to be too hard to figure out. Army basics. I can't imagine there's anything too hard to figure out that as well. So we can always open those back up if we find some issues. Uh, who are we playing as? Who is this? Uh, where would we see that? Or playing as Russia. Okay. Uh, I like the blue. That's awesome. And do we know what our bonus is? Uh, there we go. We have, oh, regional production. What? Production's always good. <laughs> so I feel like that's actually a really good bonus to get. So Russia with regional production. Now, here's the thing. The nation itself, as far as I know, means nothing. Literally nothing uh, other than the flag and the color. Uh, really, the only thing is going to be that little bonus that you get. Um, so that's the only thing that makes a difference. And, and, and when you think about it, considering the bonuses are so minimal, you know, a little extra production or, you know, maybe something with, related to food or something like that. It's just one bonus, you know, compared to like civilization that has like five bonuses for, for a leader and a civilization, all that combined. What that tells me is that this game is going to be defined a lot more by the choices you make throughout the game than the bonus that you get at the beginning. I think it's okay to have a little bit of a different bonus at the beginning just to kind of make the things a little bit different because the start of games like this are always very important. So that start, that, that extra production is going to make a difference for us. But it's not going to be having, I don't think it's going to have quite the same game changing effect that a leader in a civilization in Civ Six or, or games like that normally do. So, all right, so we got Ryazan. And so we have a couple of militaries. We have a first army here. Uh, we can have three units in this one. So we could combine these two guys up. So we do have a war band here. Um, cool. And then we have, I'm assuming just another war band here. I think first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and move some guys out. Get a little bit of vision. Usually scouting in games like this early on is super uber, uber critical. And we're going to go ahead and choose our first technology. So this game is going to work a little bit different than, again, games like Civilization VI or other games like that. 
Uh, we are currently in the Age of Stone. Up next is the Age of Bronze. In order to get to the Age of Bronze, we have to research three technologies. At least three technologies. We could research all five of these technologies and then maybe move to the Age of Bronze. Or we could just research three, then move to the Age of Bronze. Or we could research one. It's not going to happen this way. But we could research one and still kind of end up in the Age of Bronze because the age is advanced based on whoever gets there first. Uh, so we might be moved into the Age of Bronze even though we're not quite ready to research the technology that allow us to sort of get there ourselves, I guess is my point. So the, there's some age mechanics that come into play, even whether we're, we're, we're ready for them or not, I guess is what I'm getting at. So uh, this first transition will be a single transition to the Age of Bronze. There's only one choice. In the future, there will be multiple choices based on certain criteria. Um, so we'll get into those as we come up. Uh, so we do have, we have things like farming, uh, which allows us to put plantations down. Um, allows us to get more food. Uh, we also have a food stockpile, which also gives us more food. Food is always good in games like this. We also have the farm improvement, which presumably also gives us food. Uh, we have tribal elders here, which gives us knowledge, which I'm assuming is research. Uh, it looks like we have two research at the moment. So getting a tribal knowledge hut would actually increase our research by 50% right now. That's actually pretty significant. So that's going to be like your libraries in Civ 6. Uh, we have defenses uh, that gives us... Gives an additional defender at each capital in town. So, okay. Our towns do have innate defense, defensive units. So, even if we don't put units there, they will have their own built-in units that will fight for them. Now, as you get more advanced in the game, you get barbarians or other civilizations attacking you. You probably still want to station your own units there. But just because the city's there doesn't mean it's completely defenseless. It's by point. So, something to take account. This would also allow us to uh, build archers, but also it spawns a single archer at our homeland. Our homeland is the name of our main capital. Uh, as my, as I understand, as we build up more regions, each of those cities that we put in those regions is themselves called a capital, and then the main capital of our entire nation is called our homeland. Um, and we get some warfare XP. Uh, that's something we'll get into in just a second. XP is very important in this game, and there's going to be lots of different types of XP. Uh, we can go scouting, which actually sounds like what it sounds like. You get a scout. Uh, the cool thing about this is that Instead of building a scout unit, if we just want a scout unit, we'll just go research scouting. And we automatically get a scout unit. So it's a cool way to get some units uh, without actually focusing on building those units. You can focus on infrastructure and stuff like that. Uh, we also get the lookout building, which gives us exploration XP, another XP. And we also get um, the ability to move through jungle and deep forest terrain. Uh, and also build towns on those. And then finally, we got workers. Uh, we can either have them build uh, improvement points, uh, which we do get eight improvement points, uh, I guess, plus eight per turn, I'm assuming, uh, just by researching this. And we also get the clay pit, which gets us, I think, production. It's interesting that it doesn't actually say it here, but I think it is production. So let me come back to this for a second. Let's talk about the XP for a moment. Not only is there research points, which is we got two of those. There's also culture points. We got two of those. But there's also these things called XP points. Uh, right now, we've got the only thing we got access to is government XP. And as we get more and more government XP, we're going to be able to pick, click more and more buttons. For example, one of the buttons we could click is spawning settlers. There's going to be other things we can do related to our government over time. We can also put government XP into building out our government in a kind of in a similar fashion to uh, policy trees. And like I would say more like Civ 5 policy trees than anything related to Civ 6 in this case, but still along those lines. Uh, military XP is going to allow you to do military type decisions. Exploration XP, exploration type decisions. And there's going to be other types of XP as we progress and those are going to be resources that we're going to be building up over time so something to kind of think into uh think about so that's why those other xps do actually matter uh what do we all what do we have in our territory we do have some cows which currently give us wealth and food with a pasture although i don't think any of those options told us how to build a pasture yet, did they can we build one automatically we can build one automatically okay so we already have the ability to build a pasture as a as is once we get enough uh, improvement XP. So we don't build builders. We don't build workers. We build improvements. Uh, we have improvement points here. And we can get more improvement points by building certain buildings and certain improvements and, and, and researching certain things. Uh, but as of right now, we've only got one per turn. Looks like it kept out at 100. I doubt we'd ever let it go that high. Um, and these improvements are used in, over across the entire nation as far as cities that you own. And so it's not like we guess that we'd build a build or anything like that. We just have to wait up till we get to 16. In fact, what I'm probably going to do is there's a really cool thing that they have in this game. If you look in the bottom of the uh, UI element there, which is hiding behind my face, so never mind. That was a complete waste of me telling you that. Uh, if I come over here to this, you should see the same thing. 
uh, if you see at the bottom of the spawn settlers, it says control left click to set a reminder. We can actually set reminders for certain actions just so we know, remind ourselves to do that. Exactly what it sounds like. Uh, I might actually go ahead and remind myself about the settler, but I'm also going to remind myself about the pasture. So that way, when we get to 16, I don't have to like remember. I'm going to be distracted by doing the videos and stuff like that. And I want to make sure we have that option. Um, so we got forest and then just some scrubland and then we got some grassland. Uh, if we go look at our city, we should be able to see what tiles the city is working. So we've got obviously um, six total tiles, not counting the city center. One of them is forest, which is where, what we're currently working, which is giving us one food and one production. We've got grassland, which is giving us two food. And we've got scrubland, which is giving us one food if we were to work that. Obviously, the grassland's not that good. We probably won't work that out that often. Um, more than likely, what we're going to want to do is we do have a plus one production national starting bonus. So actually, right away, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move our settler to the grassland. I'm going to go ahead and lock you in there just to make sure you don't move back because we've already got extra production. Let's make sure we're getting extra food from the get go. And we'll start looking at building stuff like that here in just a moment. I just wanted to take a look at what we have around us to decide what we want to research first. I mean, scouting is almost always going to be good, but I don't feel like a super urgent need for that. Um, clay pit, more improvements, uh, probably a really strong idea. Probably what you're going to look at is workers, farming, and tribal elders as you're just bread and butter, always. Uh, and then defenses and scouting based on the situation, you know, so, so to speak. You got lots of uh, rough terrain nearby. You might want to go scouting so you can build, build in and traverse through that deep forest and jungle terrain. Uh, and as far as defense, if we feel like we got a lot of barbarians coming at us or other opponents coming at us, we might need defenses for archers. But I think we're going to go for one of these other ones first and foremost. Um, I like the idea of getting workers just so we get some more improvement points. So I think I'm going to start with workers. And we might do tribal letters second and save farming for last and see how that goes for us. Region idle. Okay. We need to build something here. I mean, I do like the idea of getting a scout. But we can also get scouts through, I think, goody huts and stuff like that, like you normally would see. Um, so maybe I don't rush this guy. I always, always rush the scout in Civ 6, though. So I feel like following that path might not be a bad idea. You know, let's go ahead and rush the scout. Let's not overthink it. We got plenty of time to get other things. We're going to rush the scout out here and we make sure that's our first choice. And now, how many 10 minutes into the game? 12 minutes into the game. We have finished our first turn. All right, goods. There's, goods are a new... You see these type of goods in other games? Uh, for like, I think Gal Civ 4. Or Ga, yeah, Gal Civ 4 has... A little bit of a concept of goods or of resources if you will and so goods are things that you can turn into other things uh for example we have the cows the cows will give us leather and meat well then later on we can get an improvement that turns either that leather or that meat respectively into something else it could be more wealth or more food or whatever so goods are a concept in this game where they're going to have like production chains and things like that which i think is is a pretty cool feature i think that is actually a really cool feature that they have in this game that we don't normally see in games like this. Okay, we already have some Barbarians over here. Our, our little 17 unit, not super strong. It should at least be able to take up some hits against that and, and theoretically should be able to win against that, but it is not very strong, so... Oh, I did not realize that was a single movement spot. I have to get used to the fact that Desert is... I, I, I'm always... My mindset is obviously on Civ 6 where flat terrain is... Uh, you can move through it, but in here, it's... Uh, the movement uh, was too much, so... I take that, uh, remind ourselves about that. All right, so we did take a little bit of damage there. Uh, we obviously know about Dwarf Barons. I'm just going to kind of... I'm going to leave these sh sh popping up because there might be something I don't know about. But if there's anything I do, I'm just going to kind of skip through it and I'll, I'll talk through it on my own. Uh, honestly, I don't really want to deal with the Barbarian. Um, although I could fortify. You know what? Let's just fortify. Uh, isn't there a fortify? There's a guard. Let's just guard here until we're healed. Maybe he'll kill himself against us and then we can kind of move from there. All right, let's move down here. All right, we do have a new border here. Um, also have a landmark, which... Oh, and there's a good hit, too. So we got a tribal camp. We got a border here, which I believe is for a... Some sort of minor civilization, probably. And we also have a landmark that we want to get our scouts over to, which we're building, to be able to discover that. Hopefully. Uh, tribal government. All right, so we know about our government. And we can go into some more of that. We have enough XP to actually pick our first belief. We could grab... Some extra food. So if we got the extra production at the beginning, it might not be a bad idea to get extra food. We also have the possibility of getting a new button to click that allows us to raise tribal armies. Now, that's not a bad idea either. Um, I don't feel immediate threat, immediately threatened. And I feel like early in games like this, you want to grow as much as you can. I think we will take the food right away. Uh, but we also need to remember that 
by clicking that button, I did slow down our ability to get a settler out, right? We're set back to zero on our government XP, and maybe I would have wanted to hold on to that so we can get another settler out. But this game's going to be a little bit different from uh, Civ games and stuff like that in the sense that, yes, there is still the concept of wanting to build out more and more cities, but I don't know that you're going to be building out quite the same way. So we might take a look at that as time goes by. All right, let's go to the goodie hut here. And we have a choice here. Nomads. You have found a small camp of nomads. They explain that their leader is very wise and willing to share her knowledge with you. We can either get plus 10 government XP, which would give us a third of the way to a settler, or we can get plus 10 warfare XP, which, honestly, I don't think we actually have anything we want to spend our warfare XP on right now. So I think we'll take the government XP. We at least have something we can use that for. We could immediately jump in here and raise tribal army, but I'm going to hold off. We're going to hold on to that 10 XP and be happy with that and move on our merry way. So... Let's bring you over here. See if we can discover who this is over here. All right, food. Uh, all right, so that's right. Food. Uh, we talked about culture powers, stuff like that. Uh, food. We have a need for certain resources in our in our domain, you know, in our cities and things like that. Rise of right now, Ryazan only needs food. It's at 150% need for its food because we're getting six food and it needs four. So we're getting 150% of its need for food. We can go up to 200%, I believe, is the cap. So if we had more ability to get more food, then that would be useful for us. We don't have a way to get that right this second. We will as some of these uh, researches kind of come about. Actually, you know what? I think this I think this is a one-time plus eight improvement points. It's not like a per turn thing or anything like that. So it's a one-time. But it's still, that one time is going to be getting us a lot closer to being able to get our cows set up. And I think that's going to be good for us. All right, we have a scout set up. We're over here. Let's go ahead and move you over to this undiscovered whatever this is. Uh, we did just find another person who is probably going to go over there and discover that before we have a chance to get there, which is a shame. All right, so we do have a... What are you classified as? Are you just a minor civilization? Yeah, you're, uh, you're not like a... Yeah, you're just a minor nation. Send an envoy to convince this minor nation to become a vassal. An army to raise it and plunder the resources. Okay, so we have a couple ways we can go about things. I want to start we'll probably start bringing this particular unit home, especially now that we have the scout. All right, we have a cultural power that we could use. So cultural powers, um, we have these you know plus two culture building up over time. We're ready to spend something, right? We could we could create a town, which will allow us to have um, more wealth generation things like that. It, it, a town is not a city, and that sounds like a silly square statement. A town is not a, a new region like Ryazan is. A town is actually in addition to Ryazan. So it's just a way to give Ryazan more resources, more growth, more border growth, things like that. Uh, we also have local reforms, which just boosts all resource generation in this region for five turns. That's actually a pretty good one. We have a Eureka, which will just give us plus five knowledge and will reduce that effectiveness over time. And then finally, we have the ability to raise uh, apparently a pair of war bands with this raise army ability. Um, again, I don't feel especially threatened right this second, so I'm going to hold on the raise army. I think we're going to go with local reforms, because that's just going to let Ryzen grow, produce, and do all the things it does just a little bit better right this second. So if we go look at our region idle, now we're up to six. We got plus two uh, from overflow, and then plus two, let's see, is it getting us... Or is that just up here? not showing us maybe it doesn't calculate until the next turn i don't think it's showing us the addition that we just get from our uh our button we just clicked all right so homeland travel farming buff okay so we got the ability to build palisade walls which obviously give us more defenses we have the ability to get a town center which gives us more government xp government xp helps us bid settlers and other things we also have the ability to get dolmen which gives us influence influence is what allows our borders to grow now we would like our borders to grow at some point I think first and foremost, they're going to go for the town center. I think that makes the most sense right this second. Uh, getting more government XP, being able to get more settlers and things like that out. Feels like a really good idea. All right, so we've met another nation, Brazil. Uh, we'll worry about diplomacy with them in a minute. Okay, how do we... Regroup. Discover landmark. All right, we got there just before they did, thankfully. Gave us some exploration XP, gave us, you know, plus one discovered landmarks, and some combat XP as well, which is going to help us upgrade our units, I believe. So, uh, yeah, onward. We'll take that. Thankfully, we got that before Brazil did. That's awesome. Uh, there is a 
I think you have to get three discoveries. If you get three discoveries, I think there's a new age you can get to after uh, the Bronze Age um, or Age of Bronze or whatever it's called. Uh, it's down over over here. I think some sort of like Age of Exploration or something like that. I think that's something that's something I remember seeing somewhere. Not to run too much of a surprise. Um, oh, you know what? I just realized you have been sitting here this whole time, not really doing much of anything. Although you are now being threatened again. Do you not heal at all in, in outside of our territory? You know, I'm going to move you back. Let's bring you back. I should have been moving you this whole time. I got distracted by talking and stuff. Um, well, that's a, a combat re re redo. Let's just move you up here. Let's just start moving you back as well. And I just want to do a little bit of exploration here. Do you have the cultural power? Um, we could... Did we not already do the local reforms? I think we did, didn't we? Um, or did I not actually click the button? Did I not actually click the button? I must not have, because... It's weird. I thought I clicked the button. Local. Oh! I know what happened. I didn't tell you where the local forms would be. It's a regional thing, and I had to actually click on the city. I was, like, very confused for a second there. Now we should be able to go into here and see that we've got more um, knowledge and more culture and everything coming through. So that that that's much better. And now we are at 200% of our food needs because we have those local forms. Perfect. Okay, that's much better. All right, basic combat. Uh, so combat in this game is very simplistic. In fact, uh... Uh, if I show, I would, I could show you in a minute, but I, I will try to show you what combat looks like here in a minute. But for right now, we're not going to worry about it. But combat is very simple, in the sense that I mean, it's not like it's any more simple than Civ Six. I mean, Civ Six, you just literally have the two units just smack each other. In this game, because there's the concept of armies that can have multiple different types of unit, there is a little bit of a back and forth in the little pop-up window that that shows you what happened in there in the combat. And ranged units obviously are good against you know melee units and you know, things like that. So there's some countering and things like that that you want to kind of keep in mind. So we'll get into more of that as we get into more combat. But it's 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 still it's simplistic, but it's definitely a little bit more advanced, I guess, than what Civ Six currently has, if you will. I'm gonna move you back and have you heal up in town. Just hopefully get a little bit more healing from that. We'll do the same thing with you. Get you back over here. All right, new technology. We did get workers. Which did give us the eight XP for imp or eight improvement points. We're at fourteen. We need sixteen to be able to get our cows set up. So we will definitely be looking at that here in just a moment. I think next we'll do tribal editors. I don't feel like we need to rush farming, especially we're at, since we're at two hundred percent of our farming need right now. Anyway, we don't really need more food right this second. Eventually we will, but right this second we do not. All right, we do see some of the looks like I saw China and USA. Obviously we know about Brazil, so we can see a little bit of a hint of some of the other civilizations. Again, it doesn't really matter the civilizations themselves don't actually mean anything in the context of the game. But, um... It's interesting to see them pop up there. Alright, so we do have a pasture reminder. Thank you, pasture reminder. And I think we want to go ahead and just put this down. Uh, I was just only going to give us expiration XP. Uh, wait a minute. No, okay, no, the cattle will still give us stuff, too. It'll give us food. It'll give us meat, which counts for food, and leather, which counts for wealth. Now, wealth early in the game is not going to be super critical. It will become a thing as we progress for sure. Uh, would we rather do something else instead? I mean, we can't do a dock or anything. Clay pit allows us to... Let me look. actually look at it. What does the clay pit actually do? Uh, that's the hunting camp. Clay pit will actually give us uh, improvement points, which will allow us to get more improvements quicker, which is something to think consider, as well as giving us some production as well. Um, I don't know. I kind of want to get the cow set up. Well, we're not, you know what? Since we're capped out on food, let's go for the clay pit first. I'm going to change my change my mind here. I think that's okay. Yeah, we could have done this a couple of turns earlier, but I think it's okay that we uh, thought about that and made a different decision. Now, clay, you know, it's the base level of a resource. Eventually, there's going to be an option to be able to turn clay into bricks and things like that. So that's how those resources work. There's going to be resource chains that will help produce more and more things as time goes by. Uh, all right, we do have an undo ability in this game, which is very unusual for games like this. Um, so if we have a kind of a combat move or something like that that we just didn't really like, we have the option to uh, change our mind, so to speak. I'm actually going to move you into the city because you're much weaker than this person over here. Uh, you're going to go ahead and just move out. Got some mountains over here. 
Plus we have some just jungle. Not swamp. Region's idle. Okay, so we got our town center. Perfect. That's going to start giving us some more government XP. I think we're going to go ahead and go into the dolmen to be able to get us some influence right away. Let our boaters begin to grow. Although in one turn, we might want to switch to the research thing. All right, so that's for Brazil right there. Might be an early conquest target for us. Uh, the machines and tools used in this village are unlike any other. They serve the same purposes, but are designed with completely unique ideas. We can get just plus five knowledge or plus five improvement points. I mean, plus five knowledge is about a turn and a half of knowledge, a little bit more. And plus five improvement points is two and a half turns of improvement points. Now, improvement points are also very, are, are very good. I'm kind of thinking the knowledge. Jump to an early tech lead and being able to kind of advance through that. This feels like a really good idea. I think we'll do that. Partly because, um, I don't know. I just feel like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's a bad idea. Maybe it's a good idea. I was thinking that we, I was actually, I thought we were only, only two population here. So I thought maybe we didn't, we only had one more improvement to get anyway to work all the tiles. Uh, now that I see that we're three, I mean, I could see a usage for the improvement points, but I think we're still going to be okay with that decision. To be fair, I don't think I have the decision is wrong. All right, a little bit of stuff there. Uh, I'm going to just move you there and have you heal up, please. All right, new technology, and we do have that. I think we're going to go ahead and go right into farming, because I don't think we need either scouting or defenses right now. I mean, I could see a use for another scout, but I'm not too worried about it. Um, now, if we go in here, I am going to go ahead and have you switch to the council. Because I'd like to get that knowledge coming right away. I'm assuming you preserve your... Is there a Q? Uh, there we go. So we'll do that and then we'll come back to the dolmen. Cool. I'm happy with that. Um, there's some little icons over here that you guys can't see behind my head. A way to see like what resources are. Oh, there's the influence growth. I'm not really worried about it right this second, but good to know that those exist. All right, expansion. We have enough settlers to enough stuff to get a settler. Um. Okay. Do we want to get a seller? Truth be told, I kind of meant to do this one. <laughs> I kind of forgot. Or this one. Um. Do we want to do a settler right now? I hadn't really planned on doing a settler this early, but I immediately I can't think of a reason why not. Why don't we just get a settler over here by the grapes or something? And the cows over here, or even up this way. I don't feel like we've really found a really amazing spot though that's the only reason I'm, I'm leaning potentially away from doing a settler but i don't know oh did we want you to work in that or do we want you working this i mean i do like working the clay pit for sure i'm okay with what you did i think i mean there's only one forest tile anyway so i think we can actually unlock this now hmm do I want to grab a settler? Now, it becomes a vassalized territory. We can't make it a city right away, so it actually just becomes another place underneath Ryazan. You know what? Why not? Let's go for a settler. Maybe that's not the right idea. Maybe it is. Maybe it's, We don't know. Let's go for it, and let's just see what we can do with that. And then we have you being able to explore a little bit. A little mountain pass over here. Uh, okay, so you're part of this band here. I kind of want you to heal up at least one more turn. And we'll come back to you. Uh, we got local reforms again. I also just grabbed the Eureka for a little bit of a tech boost right now. Oh, we can check choose the technology. We just get farming. I mean, we might as well go into the Age of Bronze. Let's, let's, I think there's a little bit of a... I think you get something for being the first, don't you? I think... I mean, obviously, once we have choices for ages, it matters a little bit more for us to be the first, because then we get to choose which age we go into. I'm tempted to go with Eureka. I also see a benefit of the great town early on. Ah, let's take the Eureka. A little boost towards the Age of Bronze here. Um, I kind of want to come back and see what's over this way.
All right, a lost arch unit is making camp hiding from barbarians. Give them supplies, which gives us some warfare XP. Don't really have a huge usage for them right now. Or we can just let them join us and be, get us an archer. I think we'll let them join us and get us an archer. So now we have two units in this band here, which looks pretty good. What is this down here? Marble. Nice. Looks like you've already got a... Is this a town? Yeah, it's just a town. Okay. All right, pasture reminder. Now, I think it's worth doing the pasture. We've already got the clay pit down. I think that was a good move. Let's go ahead and get the pasture down. Got a little bit of that going for us. We are down to two pops, so we are just working the two tiles that we have, I guess, currently. We only have two improvements, I should say. Tribal stuff. Um, I mean, knowledge just almost always feels like a good thing. Let's go ahead and, uh, was it shift click or control? Control left click. Let's have a reminder set for that, and we'll come back to that here in just a minute. All right, I think you're healed up enough. I'm probably just going to settle you over here somewhere. I might move you up through this way, though. See if there's another thing along the way. Hmm. I also like the idea of being over here by the river. Now, the, um, the settlers do have a little bit of attack and defense. So the fact that they're in this army does make us a little bit stronger against the barbarians. They could die independently of the other guys if we're not careful. I think they actually have decent health. Now they're both at 50. Uh, the settlers do move a little bit faster. Um, they have a movement of 30 out of 30 versus 20 out of 20 for the uh, warband. So we are being a little bit slowed actually by moving with the warband. But I, I mean, just so used to not running settlers out by themselves that I think it's okay. You know what? Rice over here doesn't look too bad. Maybe somewhere over here we can expand out from that. It does put us a little close to Ryzan, but it might be okay. I and mean, we might not ever make this a full-blown city. We might just let it continue to be its own, like, little entity. What we got over here? Asgard A. Okay. All right, so we are being attacked. Super happy with that, but what are you going to do? All right, small village looks very old. The people here have settled atop ancient ruins, holding secrets unknown to your people. So we're going to get some exploration XP, which we don't really have a usage for right this second. Someday we will. Right now we don't. Or we can get some government XP, which we definitely have usages for. So we're going to grab the government XP, and that actually will allow us to um, come in here and grab this knowledge right now. But I think we will definitely grab that first, and then we're going to go ahead and put a reminder on the community projects. I would like the improvement point, and we'll go from there. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and tell us when we... Hmm. We can always do a hunting camp here, which would give us a bit more food. It's not a lot. It only costs six, though. We could actually do one right now. We're not working that, though, right now. We're working the pasture and the clay pit. Trying to decide if we want to put another... I don't think we want to put another clay pit down, though. Put a farm down. Uh, we're not at 100% or 200% of our food, so I think a farm would be the right idea. So we'll go ahead and just have a reminder set for that as well. All right. So here's here's what the battles look like if I were to let it play out. As you can see, they're actually attacking our warband unit, which is good for us. And then our settlers over there just doing what they do. So, a little bit of a beneficial thing that they did not attack the settlers. Because, um, obviously, they could probably kill them in a couple swipes. Well, I guess it, I guess they have 50 health still, but... So, that's how that one played out. And that's what it would look like if we were actually to watch all of these. Um, I mean, I kind of think about settling right over here. I'm probably going to move through here. See what's up there. Come over here. Try to get away from those barbarians. We might get double attacked here. Hoping we can get down here and maybe settle right here. Be right next to the rice. Get that within our borders right away. That's some force. We actually might even be able to settle right where we're at. That might not be the worst idea. Double rice right away. Lots of force to be able to get some production. Still have some grasslands and then we can grind and grow from there. Again, we're not going to have control over this one right away. 
Oh, you know what? There is a river here, too, though. No, I think we'll build right where we're at. We only have to be two tiles away from our capital, too. So, I think we actually might settle right where we're Oh, actually, we're on rice. I didn't see that we're actually on rice as well. So, never mind. We will move down one. I don't think I want to settle on a resource. I actually don't know how that works in this game compared to Civilization. All right. Well, we're actually 35 minutes into this first video. Usually, I like the first video to go a little bit longer. Um, but I think that's a good point to stop. We're about to settle our first city, our first vassal. Uh, but there we go, guys. I mean, Millennia, mixed reviews on the Steam page. I think it still could be a lot of fun. Again, I don't think it's going to be a Civ killer, but that doesn't mean we can't have fun with it as a separate entity in and of itself with a similar vibe, though. Um, so I think it's going to be a lot of fun. We'll play through it some more. Let me know, guys, what you guys think in the comments below, as well as, you know, liking the video, subscribing to the channel, all the kind of normal stuff that you would do to let me know that you do enjoy this type of content and want to see more of it. Obviously, I do have channel memberships turned on, so if you want to be able to support the channel that way, you feel free, but uh, do not feel obligated by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but I do appreciate everybody out watching. May God bless you, and I hope you join me again next time. Thank you, and goodbye. I wanted to give a special shout-out to the following channel members. Thank you so much for supporting the channel.